It's been played for 95 years, but the battle for the Governor's Cup probably hasn't seen as many points as what you're about to see come Saturday night. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz. Glad to be with you on the Toyota College Football Preview Show. It's Louisville traveling to Kentucky, a matchup in which the Cardinals have taken four straight, but they're playing a Wildcat squad that may be able to match points with Steve Craig Thorpe's offense. And for more on that, we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston. And Spencer, Kentucky has scored 50 points in consecutive games for the first time in nine years. And Louisville's defense showed a lot of weakness last week, giving up 42 points to Middle Tennessee State. Now, no disrespect to Middle Tennessee State, but it's Middle Tennessee State. Is Kentucky's offense <laughs> going to put up another 50-point performance? I think they're capable of putting up that many points. And again, I think they're going to have to do it. Uh, because Louisville can score. We all know that. But this is a very special opportunity for Kentucky because this is the first time since 1977 that they face the top 10 team. Louisville ranked ninth in both polls. If, if Kentucky should go in and knock them off, that's going to put them up at that upper echelon in terms of the national debate. I mean, obviously, they're not a top-tier team just yet. But beating Louisville will certainly get them there one step further. And they can certainly get into the top 25 with that victory over a top 10 team. You know, Andre Woodson mm -hmm. heading into the season, Spence, he wasn't mentioned as a Heisman candidate, although, you know, maybe he should have after last year's 31 touchdowns, seven interception year. But now he's thrown 213 consecutive passes without an interception, just one off the SEC record that's held by Georgia's David Green. What differences mm -hmm. do you see between his game and a guy who is a favorite for the Heisman in Brian Brom? Well, both of them are coached extremely well. Now, Steve Krechthoff, who came over from Tulsa, is one of the most focused coaches, quarterback gurus that I know out there. Jeff Tedford out of Cal is another one. Steve Spurrier, of course, is another one. But when you look at Steve Krechthoff, the one thing that I think that makes him unique is he has one of the most creative playbooks out there. And his quarterback, being a starter, starting off as a freshman as a starter, was able to really capture and consume that offensive package despite the short turnaround that he had coming from Tulsa. And to be able to see how he executes that offense on the field is really something special. He's only going to get better from here. So anybody that faced them, whether it's Kentucky or anyone down the line on that schedule, are going to have problems because Brian Brom is going to get better. Now, Woodson, this guy, as you said, was quiet last year. We didn't know a whole lot about him. But he's a mature guy, a senior, a quarterback that is really going to take this ball club to the next level, mainly with his dual threat and his ability to make sound decisions, Jason. Yeah, and he's been coached very well as, uh, also by Rich Brooks. Uh, Tim Brando and I talked about that a lot last year, and I'm sure we will talk about it again this year uh, on college football postgame shows here on CBSSports.com. But one other point here in this game, you know, we've talked about the, the offenses a lot, and that's obviously the focus going in, but you got to face somebody. And we talked about the opportunity here for Kentucky to beat Louisville, but is Louisville's defense going to hold up in this one? What did they learn from last week's game against Middle Tennessee State? Well, the one thing about defensive problems is you don't fix them overnight. Uh, if you play fundamental defense, you tackle well, and your cover schemes are designed in a way to prevent prolific offenses from scoring on you, you can make adjustments in real time in game situation. But if you're broken, if you're not fundamentally sound, you've got guys that won't hit, won't block, won't tackle, aren't coachable, you're not going to fix that overnight. I don't think that's the problem for Louisville right now. I think they're well coached defensively. The answer for them is to come out and play with immediacy and urgency and understand the bigness of this game. I mean, everybody knows that they're a prolific offense, but we don't know much about their defense, as you pointed out. I think this is a statement game for them, an opportunity as much for the defense as it is for the offense. All right, so it's a statement game. Do you think they win the game? I think Louisville can win this game. I think they'll win it by two touchdowns. I think you'll see the offense outscore Kentucky. Uh, as prolific as Louisville is, Kentucky is good, but they're not as good. All right, uh, Louisville so by 14 we'll revisit points. this next week because I'm going to go the other direction. I'm going to take Andre Woodson and Rich Brooks to get a statement game. We will get more from you next week, and we'll talk to you on CBS this weekend. All right, Jason, my man, good to see you. All right, folks, Louisville ranked number nine in the country. You heard Spencer mention 1977 uh, as a key year. That's also the last time the Wildcats beat a top-10 team. That was fourth-ranked Penn State back then. All right, they're trying to knock off that top-10 team for the first time in 30 years, and it begins at 7.30 Eastern time. For more on this game or any other game in college football week three, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horwich. Thank you.